right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1995 Ford Crown Victoria LX. Up front is a 4.6 liter V8 and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Crown Vic because if you have eyes, you could probably tell that this vehicle's been around the block a time or two. It's actually been around the block quite a bit with 362,000 miles on the clock. So I am excited to share not only this generation of Crown Vic that I haven't driven before, but also this car's history because I think it's quite an interesting tidbit. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 4.6 liter under the hood. Well, it makes about 190-ish horsepower from this era. It is a two-valve single overhead cam V8, but this was the first generation of the modular V8, debuted by the Ford Motor Company in 1991 for the Lincoln Town Car. Now, we saw the modular V8 for years and years and years, up through the second generation of Crown Vic, and even used in other vehicles like the Mobility Ventures MV1. It's incredibly reliable, and this car should be a showing of that. 362,000 miles on a completely unopened, unaltered 4.6 liter. Now, it does burn a little bit of oil, and by a little bit of oil, I mean a lot of bit of oil, but this engine keeps going. Even when it's consuming drinking oil, bleeding from a wound, it keeps moving forward forward and this car hasn't been down a day in its life. Now, like I said, paired to it is a four speed automatic that similarly has only ever had fluid changes and is the original transmission here in the Ford Crown Victoria. Absolutely love that. It's shifting okay. Sometimes it likes to go into overdrive for no reason, but I'll give it a pass for being such an old timer. Last but not least about the Crown Victoria, of course it is rear wheel drive. So how's it feel to drive a nearly 400,000 mile Crown Victoria? It's actually very pleasurable, unless you have the sense of smell and you smell that burning oil, eh, then you regret it a little bit. But drive with the windows up and you'll be fine. The ride is obscenely comfortable. Very, very comfy, very cushy, and even more cushy than the later Crown Victorias that came down the road in the 2000s. And those are even cushy, but this is even cushier. This generation of Crown Vic makes the second gen feel like it drives like a Yugo. But this, even in its aged, old, driven hard state, it floats over bumps better than most vehicles here today. And that is the sign of true craftsmanship here in the Crown Victoria from 1995. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. Off to the left is my battery voltage and fuel. In the center is my speedometer, and off to the right is my coolant temperature and oil pressure. On the steering wheel, I do have cruise control options and horn buttons, but nothing beyond the big pillowy airbag. Off to the left, I do have my panel dim, auto headlights, and my interior lights as well as my rear defrost and moving on to the door we have our power seat adjustments power mirrors power locks and power windows moving into the center we do have the original ford radio love seeing that in vehicles of this era i love seeing original radios just because in the 90s it's hard to find those we do have a digital clock and then we have the climate controls very simple straightforward fan speed off to the left temperature in the center where to send it off to the right. Then we do a pull out cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the Crown Vic. And just like Ford products before it, and just like the Crown Victorias that came after it, it too fails the big friggin' bottle test from 1995. <laughs> Now moving on to the seats, they are cushiony, comfy, and built like your grandmother's smoking chair. This car makes me want to smoke a stogie and hear stories from the war. It's cozy where you want it to be cozy. It offers you no type of support like an absent parent, but hey, these are the seats that I will tell my kids about generations down the road. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1995 Ford Crown Victoria LX and it's burgundy. It's very burgundy. I do have a center console. It's a big foam brick. Uh, I have ashtrays in the doors. Not a whole lot. I do really, really love this maroon burgundy interior. I think it's so classic. I think it's so 90s, which is just it's fun to experience like this and you know you don't really get interiors like this anymore 
However, speaking of spaces and things trying to segue into the trunk space, let's go do a trunk and cargo space review. All right, around the back of the Crown Vic. Now, this is the era still of two keys. Although Ford was an early adopter of switching to one, this still has two. So this black one was for the ignition. The silver one is for the trunk. And once we are back here, as you can see, so much space back here. This is all of Michael's supplies, and yet he could fit so much more. You could go on a camping trip and never leave the trunk of your car. So very, very great. Crown Victorias, Grand Marquis, Marauders, Town Cars are all known for having huge trunks, and that was very much true here in 1995. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and this is known as the Aero generation of the Crown Victoria. Reason for that is the nose is a little bit more curved than it was in the past. Take a look at this 1982 Ford LTD that I filmed, and now look at this starts to make this thing look like the Jetsons mobile. But that's the lineage that this Crown Victoria came from. That LTD that I filmed was actually a fleet vehicle and so was the Crown Vic at the time. Now this was a personal model that someone would buy off the lot, but you get my point. However, that does feed into my final thoughts. What do I think driving this Ford Crown Victoria? Well, it's a little worse for wear in some areas and at some angles, sure. But it's a very cushy, very comfortable, very floaty ride. The interior has held up remarkably well for the mileage. The engine and drivetrain has held up remarkably well. It's just the body that seems to be failing. And how can you blame this car? It's a Chicago car. This is what is going to happen to these vehicles. But this vehicle is a testament to what American cars used to be. I know this was built in Canada for ease of manufacturing and to technically make it an import so it got around the gas guzzler tax in the 90s, whatever. This is an American car. Let's be honest here. This is what American cars used to be. They used to be reliable and dependable and used to be able to go the distance when you ask them to. Modern American cars, I don't know if you could say the same thing. But I mean, take a look. This thing is clawing tooth and nail, holding on to life. This should have been, by all modern means, put into a junkyard many, many years ago, many presidential terms ago. This should have been turned into a Coke can or a park bench. But this Crown Victoria says no, and every day it starts up in the morning, and every night it shuts down and cools off properly. It's as reliable as a hammer or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And most notably, the current owner, Michael, was taken home from the hospital when he was born in this Ford Crown Victoria. His father purchased the car with only 30,000 miles on it in 1998 and had a little bit of a distant drive to work for the next two decades where it racked up this 362,000 miles. Michael was then given the car and sold it to a friend. A friend, although keeping up with the maintenance, parked it out in his lawn and didn't really upkeep it as well. And when it was time for him to get rid of it, Michael offered to buy the car back and he did for $20. And it made the four hour trek back from Michigan to Illinois and has continued to work. There hasn't been a day where the reliability of this car was even questioned or thought up. It's gotten to the point where the owner Michael says, please let this thing die so I can move on. But the Crown Victoria says, no, I'm not dying. I'm not giving up. For as long as there are paved roads and unleaded gasoline, this Crown Victoria is gonna keep doing what it's been doing. And so unfortunately, yeah, our American story has changed and differed from when this car came out. But the Crown Victoria will continue to stand like a stone coliseum as a showing of what we used to be capable of. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Michael for letting me take out another one of his Panther platforms. I also reviewed his Mercury Marauder recently, so go check out that video as well. Michael's been fantastic to work with, and I appreciate him very, very much. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.